Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. David Schwartz. Welcome to the Ortho Windu webinar on minimally invasive spine surgery and scoliosis surgery. An outline of what we're going to go over tonight. First of all, I want to formally introduce myself. Again, I'm Dr. David Schwartz. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon at Ortho Indy. I've been practicing for 25 years. I trained in orthopedic surgery at Northwestern University in Chicago, and then did my spinal fellowship at the University of Louisville and Leatherman Spine Center in both adult and pediatric spinal surgery. Today we'll discuss a little bit how to make the diagnosis of scoliosis and what are the treatment options, as well as I'm going to discuss a little bit about minimally invasive spine surgery, what it is, and who it can help. So the first thing people ask all the time is, what is minimally invasive spine surgery? The key to understanding spine surgery is we've had spinal procedures now for 25 or 30 years. And what we found out, similar to general surgeons who perform procedures, if we can do less tissue destruction, less muscle um, cutting or destruction, we'll have less blood loss, patients can get up, they can function quicker, they can get back to work, um, and doing all of the normal daily activities much quicker. Um, typically, for many of our minimally invasive spine surgeries today, patients go home the same day, and if not the same day, the next morning. Additionally, we don't have to use any of the strong narcotic pain medications that everyone hears our problems with. And the key, again, is to be able to perform a surgery that has just as good an outcome, if not better, than the traditional surgery, and it has to be safe and effective. So again, patients ask all the time, what types of surgical procedures can be performed in a minimally invasive uh, technique. The first and most common one is the microdiscectomy. These are for patients who have a disc herniation in their low back. They develop sciatica where their pain is in their back radiating down their leg. Oftentimes they'll get an MRI, see that there's a disc herniation, and this procedure takes about 40 minutes. Um, you come into the hospital, we do this small procedure where the incision is less than a half an inch. Um, and usually within an hour after surgery, the patient's able to go home. We actually trim off that little piece of disc that is protruding out and putting pressure on the nerve. I use the analogy of almost like trimming a hangnail. This surgery has become so common that it's really in and out. Um, almost no risks, and usually the patient is back to doing their normal activities within a few days. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about scoliosis and scoliosis surgery. The number one type that we're going to discuss tonight is something called idiopathic scoliosis or idiopathic adolescent scoliosis. And this is a type of curvature of the spine that affects most teenagers. Most of you have at some point in your life were screened for scoliosis in school. Unfortunately today, they don't really do that. And they rely on the parents to either see that there's a deformity in their child's back or when they go to their well patient visit with their pediatrician or family practice physician and have their back checked. Scoliosis tends to run in families because there's a genetic component. We know there's about 300 genes that cause this, and depending on how many of these genes your child has will depend whether or not they develop scoliosis and how severe. We know that 2 to 3 percent of the population has idiopathic scoliosis, but the good news is that only 0.2 to 0.3 percent of patients develop a curvature that's great enough that it requires some type of treatment. Typically, we start to talk about bracing at a certain degree, and then we talk about surgery when the curve is usually over 40 degrees. Most commonly, again, we see this spinal curvature in children, but there are children who are never treated and then become adults, and so we can have adults with presentation of their idiopathic scoliosis. As I stated, since school screening is no longer being done, we ask that families and parents try and screen their children if possible. Some of the things we recommend doing, and usually around the age 12 or 13, is just to look at your child from behind. You want to make sure that their shoulders are level, that their shoulder blades look symmetrical, that their head is centered right over their pelvis. Then we will often tell them to do a bend and bend forward at the waist, keeping their legs straight, their knees straight, and letting their hands hang down. And if the parent stands behind them, if there is any type of scoliosis, oftentimes one of their rib cages will stick higher than the other. Um, lastly, you can look at their waist to see if they have a crease on one side versus the other. And another great thing, especially for girls who are wearing bathing suits at the end of the summer, if you look at those tan lines, if the tan lines aren't symmetrical, if it looks like the tan line is off to one side or the other, that's also very indicative that there may be scoliosis. So these are good things that you can do on your own just to check your children. Now, people ask, how often do I need to check them? 
I'd say once every six months to once a year. And if you notice any questions at all, please feel free to contact us here at Ortho Indy and have one of our spine physicians evaluate your child. That's what we do. We want to take care of them. The best news we can give you is that they're completely normal, but if they have a curve, we'll let them know exactly what we need to do to take the best care of them possible. So next we're going to talk a little bit about treatment options. So the first thing, most kids that we see for scoliosis, we don't really need to do anything. We just observe their curve. Usually if the curve is less than 25 or 29 degrees, we just watch it. Um, we have them come back for serial visits. Um, if it's 29 degrees, we'll probably see them back once every four months. If it's under 10 degrees, we may see them back once every six months to once every year. When we do see them back in our office every four months, we'll repeat an x-ray that we can perform at the Ortho India office itself, and we'll evaluate them. If the curve starts to progress and get larger than 29 degrees, but less than 40, we'll usually talk about a brace. Your surgeon and physician will talk about the options of bracing, the pros and the cons of it, and if it's right for you and your child to take that course of action for treatment. Lastly, curves in children that are greater than 40 degrees, we start to talk to, about surgery. Most people are very nervous once they hear about surgery, but what we try and do is reinforce and inform patients and their families that actually scoliosis surgery nowadays is very safe. I perform this surgery almost every week or two weeks on children. Um, I perform spinal surgery every week on people. Um, but on this surgery in particular, it's very, very safe. The risks are extremely low, probably less than 1%. And we take the best care possible with the most state-of-the-art equipment um, there is anywhere in the country. And most children, I get up walking that night of surgery. The, the following morning, we have them continue to walk. And usually within two to three days, we have them home. I tell most families, if we do the surgery during the school year, that they'll probably miss about two weeks of school and then be able to go back to school. Um, by six weeks, most children are doing all their normal activities. I have children playing softball, gymnastics, tennis, basketball, all by six weeks. So it's really nothing to be afraid of. Another thing I try and reassure families about is that once their child is treated for scoliosis, their life will be completely back to normal. They'll be able to have children, work, um, and do everything the normal child would do. So the thing is not to be afraid of this, not to be afraid to come in, but to really have your child evaluated and let's figure out a course of plan for treatment so they can get back to being children again. Here's an example of an adult who presented with scoliosis. This patient had scoliosis that went untreated as a child. She presented to me with um, incapacitating back pain, leg pain, sciatica. She used to love to scuba dive, to garden, and she couldn't do any of the things she wanted to do. So actually, I took care of her, and I actually performed a minimally invasive spinal surgery on her for scoliosis. And you can see on the picture on the left where we have a line extending down from the base of her neck, and you can see how her, her body is shifted off to the side to the right. You can see on the x-ray just as well how curved her spine is. Going through a minimally invasive approach for scoliosis surgery is one of the techniques I've helped develop. This patient was only in the hospital for three days as an adult, and she's 70 years old. We were able to straighten her out her spine, and you can see on the picture now where her head is centered right over her pelvis, and you can see how straight her curve is. Within six weeks, she was scuba diving and planting and working in the garden and bending and doing all of her normal activities. She felt like she had her life back. You know, and at 70 years old, you want to get as much of your activity back as quickly as possible. In conclusion, I'm happy to answer any of your questions now that you can submit to me through the chat room. However, if you don't get to submit a question or there's something that isn't answered, at the end of this webinar, you will receive an email and that'll give information of how you can contact me with your questions or schedule an appointment to see me. Thank you very much for attending and I hope we've been able to provide some very valuable information for you.